Cassie aka Cats and Camera and today I'm going to randomly generate some books. What the hell do you mean I hear nobody cry? Well, I feel like in general, and if you're a booktuber you can probably agree with me here, we kind of get stuck in this rut of talking about the same books whether it's in a tag or in a favourites video or recommendations or whatever. We always kind of reach for the same books, our favourites generally or more memorable ones. So today I have this. I have a D20, something you would normally see when playing D&D or other nerd based games. And today I'm going to roll this dice and whatever it lands on, I'm going to count through my bookcases and that's what I'm going to talk to you about. So I don't even know if I have read the books that I'm going to talk about or not, but we shall see and hopefully it will make me pick out some things that I don't normally choose. So I'm doing five rounds of this, I have four bookcases so I'm going to do one each, but with this one I'm going to do one as the normal books behind and one just as the green books, a bit festive, let's pick one of the festive books. So I'm going to roll the dice twice, the first one dictates which shelf I'm on. For example, I have a bookcase over there that has four shelves, so if I rolled a five, obviously I would count one, two, three, four, I'm back up to the top to five, so I would be picking something off the top shelf. You know, obviously all my shelves don't have 20 shelves on them, so that's how I'm going to be doing it. And then the second roll will be how many books are long, and that's the book I'm going to pick up and talk to you about today. So yeah, I feel like that is all the explaining I need. Let's just hop on into the first rolls. So first of all, we're going with this bookcase, and as you saw then, I got five. So one, two, three, four, five. That bottom shelf is something I don't really talk about very often, which is pretty cool. It's got sort of point horror books on and random stuff like that. And ten books across is this. This is a point horror collection. It's got three stories in. The Cemetery by D.E. Athkins. Freeze Tag by Caroline... Caroline, that's not how you say Caroline, by Caroline B. Cooney and The Fever by Diane Ho. I read this many, many moons ago. I can't remember the other two stories. I do remember Freeze Tag. I've got ideas in my head about people playing it and then and then being frozen and not being able to move. And yeah, I just really enjoy point horror books. That's something I don't really read very often, but for a while there, for a hot minute in my life, I did read a lot of point horrors and I do enjoy these. They're kind of cheesy, but they're kind of fun with it because we know that they're meant to be cheesy. Maybe I should read some more point horrors next year because they are fun. They're easy, they're fun. Why not? Most of the time as a girl, there's a creepy boy or is he creepy or is he not creepy? Or there's a creepy family or a creepy house. Somebody's being creepy and generally there's a girl that's getting the creepiness happen to them. It's a formula that I think works, but only if it's point horror. If you read something that comes out in 2017 or 18, um, <clears throat> one of us is lying and it has that point horror end to it. It's a little bit, it's a bit too cheesy. I did think One of Us Is Lying in the end, I was like, really? Is this a 90s point horror book? But when it actually is a 90s point horror book, it's acceptable. So next up we have these back shelves and I rolled a 20, didn't I? Natural 20, whoever rolls that, especially not in games. When you need a 20, you don't roll a 20. When you're playing this game, you roll a 20. So let me just do some counting and 17 books across. And that book is Suicide Notes by Michael Thompson Ford. So the bottom shelf, well not technically the bottom shelf, but the last bit of my books on this shelf. It's kind of all stuff that I bought recently. I've just chucked in there because I don't have a system right now. I mean, look at it. There's no system here. In fact, on every single one of my bookcases, there's just random books thrown in that were on here that I just had to fit into all the gaps where the green books were. I don't know much about this book, but it does involve a psychiatric ward, some sort of LGBT situation going on, and apparently it's darkly comedic. So I feel like this is very much up my alley. So next we're doing the green tree. Obviously you just saw, we've got eight, which lands us in the middle of the tree. I'm going 16 across. And that book is The Retribution of Maradaya by Michelle Hodkin. This one, I don't even know which number. Is this the last one in the series? This is the last one in the series. And this is a series I own all three books of. I'm pretty sure there's three books and then a Noah Shaw one or a series of Noah Shaw. And a little bit of a spoiler alert, this series is going to be on my to read of 2019. So finally reading a book that everyone seems to have read already, a series that everyone seems to have read. I'm going to be jumping on that so you will be able to see my opinions on this next year at some point. And this is about a girl called Maradaya and then some weird stuff's happening. And that is pretty much all I know about it, honestly. Which I'm glad, because I feel like it sounds like a book that I don't really want to know much about. I want to go into it not really knowing what's going on and being a little bit like, what? I feel like it's got that sort of vibes to it, so hopefully I enjoy it. 
Next, I'm picking from my small shelves, which is the four books. And you just saw I picked shelf 11 and the sixth book in. So give me one second. And would you believe it? Another book I haven't read. I'm really playing myself in this video, aren't I? But hey, at least I'm talking about books that I don't really talk about yet because I haven't read them yet. So I picked Frostbite by Rochelle Mead. I have this and The Vampire Academy. I did have these, or one well, not these, but the first one in a video a couple of months ago where I got you guys to pick what popular book to read. But one of us is lying was the book that got chosen in the end from that video and that's what I ended up reading. But obviously I do want to see what all the hype's about with this. I need to be in the right mood though because I think it's going to be kind of like got that vampire-y, teeny tweeny thing going on. So I feel like I need to be in the right mood for it. Maybe I'll love it. Who knows? I did see the film of Vampire Academy many moons ago. It was when I was quite into Shameless before they wrecked Mickey. And then because Cameron was in it, I watched the film. So I do kind of know the storyline, but generally books are better than films. So I'm sure there's a lot that I don't know as well. And last but not least, I have my shelf over there. So on this one, we are eight shelves down and 16 across. So I'm not gonna lie, pretty much that whole shelf is this same author. So it was kind of obvious I was gonna get one. And I got Percy Jackson by Rick Riordan, the first book and The Lightning Thief. Yay, something I've already read. Nice. So yeah, over there, that shelf over there, you don't really see very often. It's kind of a lot of middle gradey type things or where I've got a lot of author books together and manga and graphic novels. It's a whole thing over there. And yeah, I only read Percy Jackson quite recently, actually, a couple of years ago. I picked this up. Obviously, a lot of people read it as a kid, but I absolutely loved it. I proper buzzed through this series, like finished a book and straight away went and picked up the next one and started reading it. And I read them all in like a really short amount of time. And I absolutely loved this series. It definitely was worth the hype for me. It's not like some people say, oh, you, you need to have read it as a kid to really enjoy it. Or people only like it because of nostalgia. I've heard those. I've heard those people. And those people are wrong. Because I have no nostalgia for this series, but I absolutely love it. But also, and maybe this is because I saw them before I read the series, but I don't hate the films. I know everybody hate the films. I completely understand. I hate the vampire assistant film they made out of the Darren Shan series. It's absolute trash because that was my series growing up. So I understand why you hate the Percy Jackson films because this was your childhood and they're trash. But, you know, I kind of like them. I don't know how they missed out so much of the good stuff and put in all the stuff there. Obviously that was wrong, but, you know, they're all right. I don't hate them. Don't hate me, please. Obviously these are a lot better. So yes, that was a video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoy this sort of setup, then you should have a go, see what's going on, pick some books out. Maybe it'll be something you don't normally talk about. People do kind of do this sort of thing, but generally it's because they have friends or followers and they go like, hey, give me a number guys. And then I'll pick some books from that. But I'm like, hey, who needs friends when you've got a dice, right? That's how I roll. So yeah, let me know down below if you've read any of these, especially the ones that I haven't read. Have you read them? Do you enjoy them? Are you a fan of the Mara Dye series? Because that's something that I'm definitely going to read next year. I don't know about other things that I picked up and mentioned. There's just so many books, guys. I'll read them eventually. If this is your first video about me, enjoy it, then please check out some of my others. And if you continue to enjoy them, then please subscribe. That'd be awesome. Anyway, guys, I'll see you tomorrow with a giveaway. So definitely come back for that.